Happy vegan day, guys. Why is it vegan day? I don't know. Wilson wants a vegan day. <laughs> so, I just want to put this out, guys. This is called, what is it called? Texture soy protein. So, this is pretty much our imitation meat. So, we got our chicken right here, guys. I just rehydrated again. Uh, we got our beef. Looks delicious. <laughs> and we got some chicken ball. Look at the juices in there. Look at that. Look how juicy it is, all right? It actually does look like meat, though. Where the vegan gang at? Check it. Let me show you how easy it is to make the best vegan feast ever. Don't blink. So, on the menu today, guys, a lot of vegan dish. So we got some mock chicken, curry chai pow. We got some curry chai pow, and we got some mock chicken. We got some wood ear mushroom. We got some mushroom, or not mushroom, this is um, bean, bean curd. We got some glass noodles. We got some, what is this called? Fake meat. <laughs> we got some carrot, and have you guys seen this? It's a mushroom. Crazy, right? I made three sauces. So this sauce is just our master sauce, guys. No fish sauce in it, it's just soy sauce base. Uh, this is our ginger sauce, or the ginger sauce. Uh, this is, it's kind of thick right now because I cooked it yesterday. It's a peanut and coconut sauce. So, let's put this all together. And, star player has woken up, guys. Come here, kitty. Come here, my precious little lady. You wanna say good morning to everybody before we start cooking? Hmm? Good morning! Tofu is only good when it's deep fried or braised in some good sauce or if an Asian makes it. <laughs> I'm not trying to say Asian, I don't know, I'm gonna say Asian makes the best vegan food, okay? So, our fake beef, got our fake chicken here. What we're gonna do, cornstarch. No seasoning guys, just cornstarch it. Our sauce has a lot of flavor already. Yes guys, I did not show you guys the recipe for the sauce. I will show you guys it one day, okay? Because we have so much stuff going on, okay? So we'll take our chicken ball. It actually looks like real chicken, eh? Look at that. Take some cornstarch, throw it on. Quick time, chicken ball first. Everybody in the pool, I don't care if they can swim. It's gotta get it. Chicken nuggets out. Let's make some Kung Pao chicken. So, tablespoon of sesame oil here. Whole red chili. Swashon pepper. Maybe just half a teaspoon of. Get your mouth all numb. Once you got this nice and roasted, take our mock chicken, or mock chicken ball, toss them into the pool. Take our ginger master sauce, throw it on top. There it is, nice, easy, vegan, Kung Pao chicken. Take this heat up. Yes, guys, I know I'm rushing right now because I have no time. Beef and broccoli, we got sesame oil. We got this imitation beef that's been marinated here. Just gonna take our master sauce here, which is just a soy base. I'm gonna do with three ladles in it. Guys, I'll show you guys later, okay guys? Just step by step. We got some broccoli here. Ow, 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 ow. We're in our broccoli. <laughs> here it is, beef and broccoli, vegan style. On this side, guys, I have some beef frying up, or some fake beef frying up, actually for our ginger beef. Ginger beef, so a tablespoon of olive oil, not olive oil, sesame oil. I got some carrot here, saute these carrots in. Once you got them nice and sauteed, I got our fake grilled beef, our fried beef here. Toss them in guys. These look like chips. <laughs> Don't worry guys, they will be rehydrated with the sauce here or the ginger sauce here. They'll be all good, there it is. See that? Okay guys, I will show you guys step by step after this piece, all right? Let's just see. Nice, beautiful ginger beef complete. Isn't that beautiful? Next, Buddha Delight. So, in a pan, sesame oil. I got the mushroom here. I got some tofu here. I got some wood ear mushroom. I got some bok choy. I got some baby carrots, and I got a bunch of snow peas in this box here, or bag here. Throw this in, very simple, guys. Your master sauce this is all you need, guys. This is curry chai pao yu, or curry tidbits. It's beautiful. And there it is, guys. Do you guys believe me now? That I say Asians makes the best vegan food. So I got some ginger beef. I got the Buddha Delight here. We got the Kung Pao chicken, or not the Kung Pao chicken. General Tao, I say General Tao. We got the beef and broccoli, and we got the noodles. The noodles are in the bottom, so you just gotta mix it up. Now do you guys believe me? Look at this. Stocked up on fish sauce too. <laughs> but I didn't put any fish sauce in here, just to tell you guys, okay? I didn't put any fish sauce in here. Believe me, just believe me, okay? All right, let's go to Wilson's. At Wilson's house. 
Hello, I just came back from New York. How was your trip? Like not even five minutes ago. How are you feeling? I'm super tired, but I got all my god sister, god brother. Hi. My nieces. Say hi, girls. Alexa, say hello. <laughs> so shy. <laughs> a little shy. So shy. But we got a vegan feast. We're doing vegan food. Shout out to the vegans. So this is your first time trying my vegan food. Yeah. Did you get a chance to film? So people? this is my take on ginger beef. All right, all right. This is uh, General Tao chicken, chicken. Vegan Toku chicken. Sound. Yeah, vegan chicken. Sound. This is Buddha Delight. Whoa. <laughs> uh, this is just uh, noodles. Last but not least. Oh, it's just broccoli and... Um, broccoli and beef. Well, I kind of had a bit of it. So just whatever is left there. Yeah, that's fine. But you got the rice? Yeah, it's in the rice bowl. You look so tired today. <laughs> oh, hey! Alright, let's get into this. Welcome. Should we put it into our cup or what? No, no, no. Okay, here's the thing, man. This needs to get heated up because when tofu cools down, it turns hard, you know? Yeah. Just like meat too, but it just gets hard. But the flavor's still there. I'm excited. For but it's, it's the thing is it's like when it cools down the texture is kind of different now too. When yeah. it's warm, it's good. You know? Well, I just want to say thank you for coming over. It's crazy, man. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's it was a rush today, guys. It was literally. You actually like, just got here. Yeah. From what? New York. Yeah, I flew back from New York, but then I had a delay in Toronto, and then yeah. it was so foggy today in Edmonton that like we couldn't even get back into Edmonton, so they dropped us off in Calgary. And we had to wait for two hours. Then they finally like, okay, the fog's the, the fog's lifted. We're gonna like fly you back. And then I finally got home by like five o'clock. Huang comes up five o five, and I'm like, <laughs> just try, like I'm literally just like unpacking. Mm. And here we are. That's weird. That's that was a weird map that you drew me. Where it's just like, I didn't draw here? that. No. Oh, you didn't draw that. No, that was literally the flight. Oh, was it? Yeah, and then they went down. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they, they, that, that was the airplane flight. Yeah. So it was like Edmonton, Camrose, then it goes Calgary. So the plane's like this. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. I don't know what else to say other than that's the most, <laughs> that's like the worst path thing you could ever take mm. for a plane, and that's exactly what happened. I guess when they hit Edmonton, it was just too foggy. They're like, yo, we gotta go to Calgary. Yeah, it was one of those things. Mm. Man, I don't even know where to start. You know what? I'm yeah. gonna start with this. Introduce it. Okay. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, Sea Change is my homie Taylor's company. And oh, that's great fruity. <clears throat> he won a gold medal for this in all in the Alberta Craft Oh, that's Beer awesome. Awards. So, cheers to Taylor and Sea Change. Big shout out to you, Sea Change. Does Sea Change do uh, kegs? They do. We should Dude, do when party. are we gonna get? <laughs> Bro, come through for a we gotta keg do a party. Keg party. No? That'd be so crazy, man. Oh, oh it's nice, man. It's great fruity. Very yeah. good fruity, actually. Compared to your sh classic shock top. I actually thought it was, um, shock, what is it? Shock top? Yeah. was a orange beer. Yeah. But it, there's no taste of orange to that. No, this is a hazy IPA without the bitterness. <clears throat> I like it. What's the thing between uh, unfiltered and unpasteurized? I think you asked me this last time. Oh, did it? Yeah. And I have no idea. Small batch. Yeah. They only do like 30 heck at a time, which is like 30,000 liters, I believe. That's pretty still pretty nuts though. <sighs> yeah, I'm excited for them. They're gonna do big things. But do you know who else is doing big things? Who? You? You. You, bro. No, you. bro. Wait, tell me about you. Tell me about your week. My week? My week? Yeah, man. How was your week? <laughs> I've been gone week. for a week. How was your week? Man, I was just working, man. Working. And cooking, and working, and cooking. How about yours? <laughs> flying and yeah. flying and. Grand this guy's so tired. This guy's. I'm feeding off this guy's energy right now. Like, no, no, no. We can. We can. You have it a tired up. energy right now. Then I'm having a tired energy right now too. I think we're having a chill energy. Yeah. I think usually what ends up happening is like we get so hyped up. Yeah. And then everyone's like, "Oh my god!" But yeah, yeah. this is a nice sobering. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's nice. Chill. It's nice. Chill, it's chill, Honestly, I just want to have a conversation with you. I'm just like... We'll give him a bite first, guys. Right. I'll bite this. Quick tap! He's got it. Nice. Pump this. Mm. It looks like real meat. It's actually incredible. It needs to be heated up. The texture is so different, man. 
from what I've tried, the texture changed because of the tofu. How do you think? Texture is different, right? Bro, I can't believe this is made out of tofu. This, this thing? Is, yeah, this is insane. I say it's it too, man. It's like texture like tofu too, or meat too, right? It has like the strands like chicken. Mm. Like when you bite into it, okay. Yeah, dude, what kind of tofu did you get for this? The place you showed me. Oh, no way! Yeah. <laughs> nice. Like, go for it. <clears throat> did you get all of the tofu from them? Mm. There's a couple down the street too. The tofu I got was in this one and this one. The other places was these tidbits one. Yeah. These ones right now. Dude, this is like super legit. Do you like vegan food? Maybe that's why everyone bailed on us. That was all I was saying the other day. Because <laughs> I was like, we're going to do a vegan feast and everybody bailed. Eh? Dude. <laughs> dude. They underestimated you. <laughs> they underestimated you. They're like, we're not going to eat avocado toast. <laughs> I'm just saying, you're right though. Uh, I don't know which video that was, but yeah. I think Chinese vegan food is some of the best. Vegan 100%. 100%. Food. Yeah. Like, 100%. Mm. Like, if people are going vegan, Go Asian vegan. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go Asian vegan. Don't go what, Western vegan. Oh. What was it? My mom's a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. My aunt's a vegan. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why I went to New York mm -hmm. was to grant a wish for a girl with cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And her and her husband are vegetarian and, and vegan. Mm -hmm. And that kind of inspired me to really dive deep because that's all I ate yeah, yeah. this whole week was vegan slash vegetarian yeah. mm -hmm. and the food was fantastic yeah like we went to a restaurant called candle 79 yeah and it was unreal it's so good like oh, not avocado and toast <laughs> <laughs> and quinoa <laughs> and quinoa <laughs> just a bowl of quinoa please oh man they had this salt in like uh, piccato it, it's like I, honestly bro I have no idea what it was mm -hmm. it was just Tofu, vegan, they even had vegan drinks and vegan uh, desserts. What do you mean vegan drinks? Yeah. Everything's vegan drink now. Think about it. They're, they're scamming you, man. <laughs> $10 extra for a vegan drink. You're like, yeah. Branding like, right there. Yeah. This is an exclusive vegan drink. It's like, what is it? Bro, vegan water. Bro, this <laughs> is some pasteurized, man. <laughs> extra dollar. <laughs> Pay that premium. But no, the trip was great. Mm. It's good to be back. I think the layovers and the traveling really ate up a ton of my energy today. I feel it, man. I feel your energy, man. Yeah. It's low. Yeah, I need to top up. I just need a nap, to be honest. Mm. That's all I need. It's good to be back, honestly. It's like... It's just nice to like sleep in your own bed and not like a hotel room and live at the hotel. That's what I'm thinking, man. I'm like... Maybe I should like bring my blanket, like when I travel to Vietnam. You could. I should bring my blanket and my pillow. Just to feel like somewhat home. <laughs> I um I have this adventure time stuffed BMO, mm. which is a character, and I bring I bring him and I bring a little blanket. Just to make it feel a little bit like home. A teddy bear? Yeah. <laughs> Technically Yes, <laughs> but it's got a name. <laughs> What's his name? No, and it's from a, from a TV show called mm. Adventure Time. Okay. And the character's called BMO. Mm. Is it the BMO Bank? No. <laughs> BMO? No, it's not the Bank of Montreal. <laughs> Dude, this is so good. Like, actually. Like, you okay? I'm actually, like, blown away right now. Like, I'm the, saying Asian vegan is... is it's vegan. actually, it's unreal. Like, mm. okay. Like the tofu that you have, mm. it has that nice meaty texture to mm. it, but without having it to be like stringy. Do mm. you know what I mean? Mm. There's the sponginess of it as well. Mm. And the, and it's just, it's, it's got a good mouth feel to it. Does that make it's sense? It's texture-wise. Yeah, texture-wise. That's the thing good. about vegan food is texture-wise. You want texture, right? Mm -hmm. Or Asian food too. A lot of Asian food, Chinese food, Vietnamese food, it's a lot of texture, right? Don't get me wrong, man. I was eating. I've been on an avocado and toast binge. Oh no way! How's it? How's it taste though? I put it with hot chili oil and then mm. I fry an egg on top. Is it good? Yeah, it's so good. 
Really? What? Well, let's not pull my fist. No. <laughs> I don't know, man. Have you did? Have you tried avocado and toast? No. Is it better <laughs> than butter and toast? Way better. Really? Way better. No. Put way. a little bit of uh, hot chili oil in it. Mix that sucker up. No way. A little better. chunky. Then you fry an egg on top. Sprinkle a little salt and pepper. Wait, that's not vegan. Wait, why? Well, I thought you were eating vegan. This is the best vegetarian. Avocado. I keep forgetting. I'm eating vegan today, so I had toast, egg, and avocado. Yeah. Okay, the egg is not vegan. <laughs> Definitely is vegetarian. Would you ever go vegan, straight vegan? No, I can't. It's mm. hard. I think I'm on the road a lot. Yeah. And you're working out. But here's the thing, there's a lot of vegan bodybuilding, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a ton of bodybuilders that are vegan, but mm. to be honest, I don't know any off by heart mm. or by name. Mm. I'm yeah, so that's curious. Real. Like, how many of you guys out there are vegan? And how hard was it? I guess that's more of the leading question. What made you become a vegan? And how was the transition period for you guys? Why do you think people go vegan? You think help wise most of them? I think so. I think most people need to reboot their system mm -hmm. because the body's a temple. They reboot as in what? Just like, just refresh? Yeah, you like eat so much meat. Times. I think it's different because like in the US you have like what 300 million people mm. dude They're gonna GMO everything like you can't you can't 100% like How do you feed like 300 million people? But the thing about vegan last time I got when last time I did a vegan feast I did a Vegan pizza, but then when I looked in the back it was like may contain milk <laughs> And I was in a vegan aisle Like it was right there in the vegan section not aisle vegan section the bottom is like, may contain milk. How do you eat it? I don't know. Why is it in the egg or why is it in the vegan section? What? Because it has the word vegan in it. I should sell chicken and put the word vegan in it. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is a vegetarian chicken. Do you think people buy it for the name or do they really care? For you know what it is. Like, do you know why I hate the word free range? I hate that word. Or organic. I hate it. I hate it. You know why? People are like, I'm gonna buy this organic milk, <laughs> but look at my cart. Like, really, just like, look at their cart, look at their, look at your cart. What else is in your cart that is organic? Why did you buy, why did you decide to buy organic milk and nothing else organic? You know? <laughs> You're so triggered right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, is, will it help? You know? People are like, okay, I'm just gonna buy organic milk or free range chicken because. It's better for the environment and more healthier. But yet, you look at their cart, it's just like red wine, chocolate bars, uh, Pringles <laughs> chips. Pringles chips ain't organic, right? <laughs> Bro, what store are you shopping at? <laughs> no, I'm just saying there's people who buy organic, right? Yeah. People buy organic. Yeah, organic's cool, right? But then look at look at their cart. It's not organic. Like, 1% out of their whole cart is organic. And it's the cart, not the product. Like free range cattle, free range eggs. I think I think people like that that name. They they buy the name. They don't buy the product because it is what it is. They buy the name, as in they think they're supporting or helping it. For they buy it to feel good that yeah. they are supporting it. But that's yeah. like me opening up a gas like gasoline station and saying this is grass fed organic gasoline. I'll buy it. <laughs> Petroleum <laughs> diesel. Here's the thing I don't understand too when you brought that up too. People who are against oil, because this might turn up like a whole controversy. People who are against oil, like oil, oil fields, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's these big activists that are against it. But how did they get to these oil fields? By car. Where are these cars run by? Why are the tires made out of? Rubber. Even they ride a bike. <laughs> Why is it made out of, right? Look at their homes, right? Even people that are against forestry. This is this is why I don't understand them. Excuse me, I just this is why I just don't understand where people are against forestry. Yeah, it's bad to um, cut down all the trees. Not cut down all the trees. I, I I believe 
uh, it's a law where they have to cut down like certain amount of trees, but plant as much as they cut, right? Mm -hmm. They're not just gonna cut it down, leave it as it is. They have to cut a certain amount by law. Like you can only cut this much by law and that's it for this year, right? They're not gonna be like, yo, we can cut everything, but then there's people that are against it. What do you guys live in? <laughs> right? I wonder. If right? someone's living in the forest and, and speaking up and saying that, yeah, I agree. Like what else? Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, but if people are living in the house and saying that, it's just like, what are you living? What like look at your house? Like what is it made out of, right? What? What are you Or you could be like, how do you get so triggered? You started it, man. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to trigger Kwong. <laughs> <laughs> we triggered you because. No, you triggered yourself. You're like, do you know why I don't like? I don't like organic. And <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's why I don't like the word organic. <clears throat> Yo, is this food organic? No. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> it's free range. <laughs> free range tofu. <laughs> Rest fed tofu. Hand picked by. <laughs> I'm not eating. I'm, I'm just like, get to the point where it's just like, are you really mad at it or are you kind of just following? That's the only thing. Man. Mm -hmm. you know? A lot of my colleagues that work for vegan, mm -hmm. and if they're not vegan, they're vegetarian. Mm -hmm. and they do a, they have a great lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them's a triathlete, the other one's a bodybuilder. Yeah. Uh, some of them run marathons. That's great. They just feel better mm -hmm. when they're just on a plant-based diet, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. Respect that. But their goal, their fitness goal, and their health goals are different than your goals mm -hmm. or my goals. Mm -hmm. And I think when people have different goals that they want to set for themselves, especially like food and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Hey man, you eat you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You, you eat, eat you. you. Yeah, you eat you. Yeah, you eat you. <laughs> you eat whatever you, you want. You eat you. <laughs> You, 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, okay, you work out, mm. but then you have to, like, how much food do you consume in a day? Like, really, how much food do you actually eat? Not as much as you, like, a lot of people think I do. Like, 24, 2600 calories. 24? 24. 20, 2600. Yeah, that's like maintained. Yeah. Mine's probably like lower than that. Like, I only eat like twice a day. I'll fast though. Yeah, I'll fast too. Like, I'll wake up, I'll have like a... a I fast too. I'll, I'll drink a coffee. I, I guess that wouldn't be considered fasting, but that's it. Just a yeah. coffee. And then just work out. And then I'll eat by like noon or one o'clock. Yeah. Like, you eat a very big meal. I've been trying to eat micro meals. Like, more micro meals, but... And those are hard. Like, little, little meals a day. Like, six meals a day. Yeah. Unless I do like the $1.88 <laughs> challenge. See how cheap that is? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how mad people were? How quack, How do you eat two slices of bell pepper and half a fried chicken, man? You just divided it. <laughs> no, okay, fine. Yeah. We'll put it together. Yeah. You'll have four pieces. But in the end, it's like five dollars, right? That's like pretty cheap meal, right? Five dollars. Five dollars is a really cheap meal for what? Twenty grams. That, how many 20, containers? I'd say twenty-four grams of protein. How many containers in the end? I think it was like you did thirty something containers, right? Yeah, but then it ended up being like. Six and eight, no, ten containers actually. I think ten. No, like eight, eight to ten. Well, you spent what, eighty bucks? No, sixty bucks, right? Yeah. You spent sixty bucks. Ten containers, six dollars average, let's say. Yeah. And how many times does a typical bodybuilder? When you were like bodybuilding, slash, like I say, three containers. Three containers is like enough, right? That's roughly so around eighteen dollars like a day. Dollars. Yeah. Yeah, eighteen, eighteen dollars a day. 10, 15, 18, Yeah, I just say eighteen dollars a day. Which is, dude, you can order pizza for forty bucks. Yeah. But but gone. but look at the protein and the micronutrients you get, right? It's high. Yeah, because you're protein yourself. So. Yeah, you have sixty grams of protein. It's so hard. It, I don't know. I think if people want to find time to cook, they'll find time to cook. Mm. I think, like even for me, I don't cook. Mm, mm. I'll like do avocado on toast. I think it's just like yeah, like you said, right? It's just like preference. It's like yeah. what people like doing, right? Like if, if someone told me to um, change my oil, I wouldn't like to do that because I'm not interested in it, right? I'd rather pay somebody to change my oil. Like every time I go into Honda, they're always trying to catch me for some reason. They're like, I'm just here for an oil change. They're like, no, you need this change, this change, this change. And you know what I said? You need your fluid. Yeah. <laughs> You've, uh... Yeah, I'm like, okay. But where was I going with this? Oh, just interest, right? Yeah. 
Like people are not interested, so they'd rather pay somebody just to do it for them. Right. Dude, are you excited to go to Vietnam next month? I am. Are we, am I exposing you right now? Exposing for no, you exposed me last time. Right? Oh, did I? Yeah. Guys, Quang is going to Vietnam in April. If you are Vietnamese and you are in Vietnam, and if you see Quang, even though all, all Vietnamese people look the same. <laughs> That's true, man. Try to pick them out. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you Quang Chan? You probably see me because I'm probably the fattest guy there, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, probably. Everybody was like, wow, Quang, you're so fat. Like, wow, <laughs> thanks, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, I can lift you. <laughs> What do you want me to move? That's that's the Asian mentality, right? They're so straight and blunt. That's why I kind of like. Right? I know, it's, but it's also so funny too. It's like, oh, Kwang, you're so skinny. Eat. Yeah, you yeah. Eat too much. Oh, Kwang, you're so yeah. fat. Stop eating. Stop eating. Mm -hmm. There's like no perfect media. Yeah, yeah. That's hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. It's like the old Asian grannies, man. I just remember my grandma just like force feeding me food. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're so small. <laughs> eat the GMO. <laughs> yeah. Eat the non-organic. <laughs> Man, um, I guess if you leave in April, I'm driving Kwong to the airport. If you say, if you see Kwong at the airport, say hi. Do it. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are scared to say hi. What? I don't know. They're shy, man. They see me, they look at me, and they're just like, oh my god, it's not Kwong. Then then they text me or they DM me. <sighs> they DM me like, yo, were you at this? I'm like, yeah, man, I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I saw you, you should have just came up and said hi. But it's just like, I guess they're shy. That's the only thing. Well, you're gonna be gone in April. I'll be gone in April as well. Where are you going? I have to go to Grand, good old Grand Prairie, Alberta. Where are you doing down there? Work. Oh, work? Yeah, I'll go to Kelowna first. Yeah. And then that's work related. Then go to Grand Prairie, work related. And then in May, is it okay if I share this with everyone? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to EDC in Las Vegas. Oh, crap. Yeah. Ins, 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 ins. Where are you going? I'm going with my buddy, Eric. Well, it's gonna be a good time then, eh? Yeah, it'll be fun. If you guys see me at EDC, come say hi. I don't bite, and I'm not shy. You're so tired today, eh? No, I'm chilling. Do you guys feel his energy? I feel like today I'm like a good, Good vibe. Good, good vibe. I think today is positive vibes. Not not too hype, not too low, but good conversation. What do you guys level. like? The hype one or just the chill one? Okay, first off, the hype one is like Wilson's annoying or like he's not. <laughs> it's okay. It's Wilson, that? A, it's Wilson in moderation. Who said that? The cutie gang has got my back though. That's what I like about your people. Your people are cool. I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've been. Oh, I took your advice, mm. and I made my videos longer with more storytelling. Mm. I don't know if you watched it, but I've I've really taken that into consideration. Do you guys like vlogs? Put it down there. Put it down in the comment there. Wilson does a lot of vlogs. Is it okay if you share it? Check out his channel. Mm. Mm? Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. What do you do in your channel? So, I think I like doing a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. like. That to me is so much fun. I work with a charity called the Front Row Foundation and I have to do the videography and the photography behind it. But I also do the edit and filming, but I try to keep it low key. And I think vlogging with the process to me is so much more fun mm. than actually like planning a set thing. Like for example, you want me to do mukbangs, right? Yeah. It's so hard for me to do mukbangs because I'm never here in the city, mm. but I prefer to travel and like vlog why I'm traveling versus like sitting and talking mm. and maybe it's in the background. Do you guys want to show rather than talk about it, right? Yeah, I like showing. I think the one thing that I've really taken from like the YouTube world and like I mean, some of you guys out there are probably trying to be an influencer. Some of you are trying to make a name for yourself and, and brand this and brand that. But ultimately, my YouTube channel, my Instagram, that's all for fun. Like, I'm just doing it for fun. Because in the real world, like, I actually have to build a business and try to have that work. Everything else is just for fun. But documenting the process is mm. the one thing that Gary Vaynerchuk mm. would talk about. Is like, wouldn't it be cool to look back at your old videos and be like, 
hey, you said you were going to do something two years ago and you actually accomplished it. Mm -hmm. mm. Right? Like, I, I like that. Because I said this year I'm going to get a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that. I'm pretty sure once you said that, Guys, Kwong wants a girlfriend, can you DM him? I'll no. be your girlfriend. I'll be your, I'll be your sugar mama. No, I like that. I'll be your baby mama, no, whatever no. mama you want. You just send that out to the universe, right? You just send it out to the universe. No, you send it out as in, I'm gonna get a girlfriend this year. And you send it out. The universe is like, I got you. I got you. The universe will always say, I got you. Whatever you send out, you respect, I got you. Kwong, you're gonna go to Vietnam and have like, Concubines, and then you're gonna have like your main concubine. What's a concubine? Is it like a house? <laughs> what's a concubine? Sounds like a like a pool pool house. Are you, are you serious? Yeah, right? what's a concubine? <laughs> really? What's a concubine? <laughs> hey Siri, what is concubine? Define concubine. Concubine is an historical term. It means in polygamous societies, a woman who lives with a man but has lower status than his wife or wives. Hmm. It's a mistress, bro. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Why did I thought it was like a pool house? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Why did I say it's a pool house? <laughs> you guys want to be Kwong's pool house? <laughs> you DM it. Because <laughs> you said you, everybody's going to meet as a concubine. I was like, what? Yeah, well you're going to go to Vietnam and have all these concubines, mistresses. Oh. But then you're like, ah, is that a pool house? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody at my pool house, <laughs> come to my concubine. <laughs> come to I mean, you can lend them out if you want. <laughs> yeah, man, I think that's the thing. People are so... Uh, think of uh, my one friend, mm. we won't say her name. Very young, but she reads the comments a lot. And that's okay, you can read the comments. Oh, it gets to her. And it gets to her, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if you're focused on your own thing, if you're literally focused on your own thing, then the haters are gonna hate, mm. but then when you finally break through, you become this innovator. It's mm. like, oh, he did it. Mm. But all the people that you love mm. and care about, and the strangers are, especially when you're trying something new that's not been done in your family. Mm. Like let's say you, your family has always been white collared, right? Doctor, lawyer, teacher, government job, and you wanna try to be a comedian, a rapper, a musician, and no one in that family has ever done it, you're gonna get shit on by your mm -hmm. family. The okay. closest people to you are always the one that don't want you to do it. They're your biggest doubters. They are. Mm -hmm. Right? Hundred percent. And like, even with my mom, like when I started, like with the business, when I was like 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, I got, I took in five years of my life, I sacrificed my early 20s, mm -hmm. and my mom still hated that. Mm -hmm. She's like, you should just go to school, which I graduated. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like 30k in debt and like my degree has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now in real life. When you're in school? Yeah. Dude, I just went to school to like appease my mom. That was it. Like after high school, I did not know what to do. Everybody's like, yo, I'm going to do this. Everybody's going like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. What are you doing, Juan? I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't even were like you, school. Were you, were you still dishwashing after high mm -hmm. school? So you went from dishwashing to doing this. I was dishwashing, I was working a dishwashing job and doing landscaping. Dishwashing, landscaping, dishwashing, landscaping. Then I went to dishwashing or cooking to house like uh, contracting or business development. Yeah. So dishwashing or not dishwashing, cooking. I always had two jobs. I always had two jobs Yeah. when I was uh, growing up, I guess. Not growing up. No, no, no. no, well, no, no really no, growing, growing up. up. Like, dude. We were 17, 18. You don't know what you I think there's like three major ages that are so scary for everyone. Yeah. 18, 22, and 29. 18, 20, is it 18? 22. 22. And 29. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it this way. 18, 17, you graduated high school. Now you're 18, you're like, oh my God, what do I do? Do I go to school, mm -hmm. university, because mom and dad want me to, auntie mm -hmm. and grandma, mm -hmm. uncle, grandpa. Mm -hmm. Or I don't go to school and I work. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you get too comfortable with work and then you become, you know, that's it. That's your path. Mm -hmm. Then 22 is a scary thing because let's say you had the perfect progression. You did four years of university, college, and now you graduated with this degree that you think you're good at, whether it's accounting, mm -hmm. engineering, 
pre-med and they're like, you know what? I actually hate numbers. Mm. I'm really good with them, mm. but I hate numbers. But now I have this accounting degree that I paid $45,000 for yeah. and now I have to do a job that I kind of don't like. Yeah. Then the, there's the 22 year old who never went to school and it's like, holy smokes, all my friends are going to university and I've only been working this one retail job for the last yeah, four years. Yeah, yeah. I've been a barista. I've been a waiter for four years. What did yeah. I do with my life? And people start playing the comparison game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's scary. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Then 29. Now, let's say you did the perfect progression or the unperfect progression. You graduated high school. You did your four years of university. You got your job that is related to your degree. But... In between 22 to 29, apparently you need to try to find the girlfriend, you need to buy the car and the, and find the house and mm. be married and have kids by the time you're 30. Man, that's so much pressure. Mm. Mm. And then if you don't go that route, you're 29, you're like, oh man, all my friends are moving on. They've got kids, cars, the house, mm. the profession, mm. and the career. Mm. That might make you feel... Like you're nothing. And mm. I think that's so crazy because I don't think you should compare yourself with other people. So those three age, age groups are the scariest, I think, for a lot of people. I think that's the hardest thing when you, you're, you're close to your friends and all your friends are there. And they're changing to this one route where everybody's changing into. As in get a house, uh, get married, get kids. Yeah. But then, that's it. After that, that's it. That means you need to somehow, some way find the degree, get the degree, first try, mm. and it has to be the job that you're gonna love forever for the next mm. 45 years, mm. and then retire at 65 and die? Yeah. Dude, that's scary. That's, it. that's scary to me. Me too. Ugh. When I think about that, that's scary, eh? That's no bueno, dude. No. When it's like, okay, everybody's rushing to get kids, everybody's rushing to get this picket fence house, everybody's rushing Man, to get kids. Man, if you want kids, don't wrap it. You want kids, <laughs> risk but, it but, all. But that's the thing, everybody's rushing to get this, but then when they get it, it's just like, that's it. We got it. Yeah, man. We got it. Then 60 years, because I can't wait to retire. Yeah. We got it. I think having friends that have some sort of goal, ambition, dream, is so important to have in your life. And if you guys don't have those friends, mm. you better find new friends and better friends. And that might be a hard thing for me to say, but it's, it's so You know true. they're out there, right? They are. Let's, guys, let's be real. Technology is so good. You can literally hashtag something, find someone on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, and mm. then you're going to be like, wow, I dig this guy. Mm. He finally gets me. Mm. Like, having friends that have ambition and goal also either does two things. It either drives you yeah. to like want to do something yourself, or it can really stifle your own growth and creativity yeah. because you start comparing yourself to other mm. people. And I think that's the scary thing. Ever had, that, ever had that one moment where you're just like, you're with your own thoughts and you're just like, wow, I am, I'm the only one with this thought here. All my friends are thinking differently and I'm the, the lone wolf out. And you're just like, wow, it's going to be lonely now. Like, I can't really talk to anybody and just like, it's just me. Yeah. Right? Now you're the weirdo. Bro, because I had that feeling this week. Yeah. Who, what, okay, so my job yeah. was to, like, to, to grant a wish. Yeah, yeah. But guess who was with me the whole time? Who? No one. Mm. I did it myself. Mm. Sure. You it might me. seem glamorous. Mm -hmm. I get to go to New York and here and mm. here and here. But that's that's what you see when I'm actually like recording it. I usually I'm just chilling by myself. But behind the scenes is a little more than what it is, right? Yeah. It's like you're in your hotel room by yourself. Your mm. friends, family are all the way over there. Mm. You missed that one party, you missed mm. that one social gathering, but that's a sacrifice, mm. and you realize that, that it has to be that sacrifice. Was it a good party though? It was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this in my book. When's your book coming out? Guys, I wrote a book because I thought it'd be funny. Why? Why would that be funny? Because my uh, previous girlfriend, when I was in university, yeah. wrote all my papers for me. What? All of it. What do you mean she wrote? She wrote all of my papers for me. Like wrote for what? For school? What? Yeah, like all my essays and yeah. like everything. Like I was like, what's APA? And she's like, you can't, like you can't talk the way you type. And I'm like, but it makes sense though. She's like, <laughs> no, it's gotta be APA format, double spaced. And I was like, what single spaced nothing. For school wise. Yeah, for school. It was mm. all for school. Mm. 
God bless her. Thank you for helping me write my essays <laughs> for me. That's how I got my degree. <laughs> if, if you want my degree back, you can take it. Like, I don't need it anymore. <laughs> I paid 30 grand for a piece of paper that say, hey, you're not that stupid, and you're patient enough with yourself to get a That's piece crazy. of paper. That's it, right? No yeah. one else. That's what a degree Can is. Can you go find find a job and work in your... That's not even related to your field. All right. For what? Then well, why did you do the paper? The Well, it's because I needed to get the marks to get my degree. Oh, okay. That's why I... So you need to do the paper. Yeah, get... so it, it was homework. Oh, okay. It was essentially homework. Yeah. And I struggled with it. Yeah. Like, all I did was, like, play League of Legends. Yeah. You didn't play StarCraft? No, that was it. <laughs> Dude, StarCraft is so hard to play just because... StarCraft is the best, man. It's because they patch it so much, and at this point, it's like you got school, and then you miss like a week of like a patch, and you're like, oh my god, you're so dated. But in mm -hmm. League, you can like play for like a month before they patch it, like next yeah, month or yeah. whatever. But to kind of tie everything together, cool. I thought it'd be funny to write a book just because I was so bad. I did English 30-2. Mm -hmm. I didn't even write any of my papers in university. Mm -hmm. How funny would it be if I become a legit author? Crazy. There it is. How crazy is that? Just because I had bad grades doesn't mean it defines me. Later I, I on. think I think a lot of people do um, have that mindset where it's just like like a girl that I told you that time when the girls just like we were just talking the ball was rolling the ball was rolling like we we're having a good time like I was riding the ra wave I was just like yeah you're yeah, 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 right? Yeah. Yeah. And then she's like, what university you go to? I didn't go to university. She's like, oh, okay, nice meeting you. And then yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> wave done. I was like, uh, all right. <laughs> but I have the empathy for her though, right. just because like she she has that mindset where it's just like school is the thing, right? Just like I guess her parents would be more into it. You could call it brainwashing. You could yeah. call it the norm. I think Excuse nobody. Me. I think this is where I think, in my opinion, yeah. having empathy on the women's side is like, hey, I I dig this guy, but is he? Goal oriented? Is he diligent? Yeah. Is he going to school? Because I'm going to school. Is he going? And I think they, they yeah, kind yeah. of mi mix and match. It's like, yeah, dude, this guy's dishwashing and landscaping. <laughs> it's yeah. like, do you drop a peanut? No. It's That's like, a... I don't. It's like, is, is this guy going to be able to, you know, fend for my our family if we mm -hmm. were to be together? Mm -hmm. So I'm at the point now where I totally understand why women date older and men date younger because. Guys want to have a little bit more fun longer. You think women, women, um, not age, what's that word? They're more the mature, biologi mature, well, mature. And they're biologically ready. Yeah, yeah. But even girls and women compare themselves to each other. It's like, oh my god, I'm 29 right now and I don't have a husband. Mm. But my friend so-and-so and that girl has two kids already. Mm. Oh my god, my life. But if your goal is to be uh, the best wife, and the best stay at home mom in the world. Oh, yeah. and, and if that's your goal and you achieve it, oh my God, yes. But if you're trying to make a difference for yourself because you want to be, you know, bad and bougie mm -hmm. and you want to get the LV and the Gucci and the red bottoms, you know? <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, girl, you're gonna have to fucking work. Mm. You're gonna work and you're gonna work and you're gonna work and do you know what sucks? The men that you're gonna attract will be so petrified to even approach you because mm. you know why? Why? Guys have an ego. Yeah. Guys don't want the girl to be more successful than mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. But that person, that female, that woman, still wants the trust, the belief, and the care from another yeah, yeah. person. And if finances has something to do with it, then mm. you know that's just a bigger picture that is very insignificant. And mm. what I mean by that is like it's not it's not about the money, guys. Mm -hmm. It's never been about the money. It's about the people that you surround yourself with and the people that actually believe in what you're trying to do. And some people will believe in you and some people won't, and that's okay. Mm. As long as you actually care about what you're doing, you'll be fine. But if you want to have a family, but you also have this like massive goal of becoming this giant entity, then what are you going to do? You, you got to sacrifice one. Mm. You have to sacrifice one. Mm -hmm. Like, And that's just the reality of it. I think right now a lot of people are soft. Soft as in easily offended? Maybe not easily offended, but they're not willing to fail. They're scared to fail. Yeah. They're scared. Yeah, 100%. Everybody's scared. That's a normal thing, right? 
Yeah. You're scared. Like when you go into something new, you're scared, man. Like you're doing something different. Like you're sitting in class and you gotta stand up and holler your name. That's scary, you know? Yeah. Like, oh my god. Like this guy's sitting in front of me. He's saying his name now. Now it's my turn. Oh my god, what is my name? Yeah. You stand up. Hi, my name is Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you just forget your name. You know, that's scary. Oh right? my god. Yeah, but then that's the thing, right? It's just like there's life too, right? It's life thing, right? Mm. Like I seen this thing on Instagram where this girl, this little girl, the cutest thing ever. Like there's like a little dome. I don't know, not a dome. Like you know those cup, like a big cup, smaller cup that fits it, a little smaller, a little smaller, a little smaller. Yep. And she's trying to figure it out. I believe it's not the Ukrainian dolls or Russian dolls. Right? No, no, it was just like a, a little, like a little thing. Well, it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. But then she, it was like containers, and she was trying to figure it out. When I was watching it, I was like, oh man, you know, I gotta get a kid. But then I was just watching it. Just like, <laughs> She was like trying to figure it out. Like she's trying to take the big one, trying to fit into the small one, but didn't work. Then she tried this one and this one. Then I was just like, well, this thing, this is a, a pop that was like, that's life. Yep. Like when you go into something new, you try to challenge something new, you're trying to figure out what goes in first, what goes first, what goes first. Like you're going to make a lot of mistakes where she was doing a lot of mistakes, right? But in the end of it, she got it and she was so happy. I was just like, oh man, crush, I need a child. <laughs> 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 That's it. I don't know if you guys saw. If you go on my channel, you'll see my baby cousin or baby niece, I guess. Yeah. Alexa mm. and Bella. Oh, she's How cute. fun yeah. are they? Yeah. Dude, I'm going to be, be 10 out of 10 dad. Mm. And I think that's where I'm at. I want to be the best dad in the future, but the only way I can do that is to sacrifice now mm. that I could have the time to spend with my kids whenever I want, mm. however I want. Because my mom and dad never went to a football game, mm -hmm. a rugby game, mm -hmm. a concert, mm -hmm. never even went to like my first open mic, nothing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they were working. Yeah, yeah, mine too, yeah. But the, but the thing is, just like my parents too, but then it's just like, I understand where you come from. But I think it just built, um, it built something towards you. Just like, yeah, I didn't get a chance to do it, but now I want to work hard just to yeah. get it for my kids, you know? Yeah. But then it didn't crush you, it was just like kind of, motivate you to do something better i don't know yeah because i always wanted to go to a soccer game back in the day i was like with your kids no with my with my, my with my parents like, like i you... had like free tickets right in elementary i still remember this day i was like dad can you take me he's like no i'm working i'm like no i'm so crushed i was like oh man my favorite soccer team i think it was called the strikers <laughs> was like elementary man like eight years old yeah i was crushed man i was like oh man i had like four tickets <sighs> It's so hard because mom and dad is rise and grind, right? Yeah, that's that's a whole mindset of them, right? Live, live or die. Very much. Just like when they come here, they're just like, you either live or die. <laughs> <laughs> they don't think about motivation, like, you live or you die. That's it, right? Yeah. That's, that, that, that's why I respect um, foreign parents. Any foreign parents out there, big shout out to yeah, you. Yeah, man. Any parents out there that's trying to get what they want to get, big shout yeah, out man. to you. Anyone that yeah. has immigrant parents, man, I get it. Or any parents that's respect. trying to just get it, man. I respect Big that. Big shout out to you guys. Hook do. Hook do. Hook do. Hook do. So, my mom got these Hook cashews do. called Hook Do. Hook Do. Hook Do. Hook Do. Hook Do. Hook Do. Why am I like popping my <laughs> Hook Do. Hook do. <laughs> I think it's Hook Do. I don't know. Can you even read, bro? Hook Do. You, you can read, man. Yeah. Right? I'm illiterate. I can't read any Chinese Hook or anything. Do. Man, Chinese is hard though. No, it's good. It's good. Is that good? That's good. Perfect. Thank you. Chinese is hard to read, man. I don't know how you guys read it. Like, you guys look at it, it's all characters. You get like, yeah, they're saying that you don't, they don't like you. Like, where, 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 where do you see like, it? <laughs> where do you see it? It's one word? Yeah. It's like, where do you see it? It's like, it's it's right here. It's like, oh. Yeah. See this stroke here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They say it doesn't like you. It means you. Yeah. And then this one here yeah, yeah. is like, no. Yeah. <laughs> you? Like, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> Like, that's it? One character? Oh, man. To Vancouver, or not Vancouver. New York. Mm -hmm. What do you like it the most? What, like, what do you like the most? Well, actually, I would say New York changed my life. As cliche as it sounds, it was Broadway. Yeah, that's crazy. Dude, Broadway? <sighs> Next wow. level. Broadway? Okay, Broadway is like when you just like, it's like a show, but people are, I don't know. Singing, about. dancing, yeah, yeah, yeah. acting. Mm -hmm. Like Grease, Grease, Grease Lightning. Very Grease Lightning. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, the reason why... Okay. The first time I went to a Broadway show, it was mm -hmm. Frozen. Oh, the Disney, Disney, Disney show. Yeah, okay. Disney, Disney's That's Frozen. A good show. 
And I was like, ah, you know, it's mm. Broadway, sure. I'm in New York, I'll, I'll watch it. Mm. And then when I watched it, like, bro. Goosebumps. <laughs> you got goosebumps. Oof. Wait, this is frozen. It's frozen. And the reason, <laughs> here's why. Here's why. <laughs> why? The seven year olds and the eight year olds mm. are so talented. So good. Oh, they, they use young actors. Young actors, young singers, mm. the whole mm. shebang. That's okay? crazy. And it was insane. Mm. Okay? Mm. So. You have a seven-year-old who's so good already. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of just thought about like progression in business. And this is kind of like where my mind went into. Like if this girl is this good at seven years old, imagine right. when she's like in her late teens, yeah. like 17. Crazy. And then imagine when she's like in her prime, like late mm -hmm. 20s, early 30s. Oh my God, what Beyond a superstar crazy. that kid's going to be. Yeah, 100%. And the only thing that's different is her experience. The fact that... If she's been doing Broadway since she was seven years old, mm. by the time she's 27, dude, she's got 20 years of experience mm. than someone who's 27 who just wants to get into mm. the business. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it that way. It's like, when I when I started my first thing, I was 17, 18, right? Mm -hmm. And then now I'm 29, I've got 10 years mm. on people trying to do it now at 29, 30, yeah, yeah. 31, 32. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the coolest part. Yeah, yeah. And this past, <clears throat> This past show that I did was Hamilton, Alexander mm -hmm. Hamilton, mm -hmm. and dude, that thing made me cry like three times. Why? It was, like, it was so deep. powerful. It was deep. It was deep. It was powerful. It is the number one Broadway show in all of New York, mm -hmm. and it is one of the hardest shows to get into. Mm -hmm. And I got into it. Tickets are ridiculous. Really? Yeah. Like. Unfathomably expensive. Yeah. Like it's actually one of the most expensive shows to go see. I want to check it out now, just because you said that. You cried three times. Yeah, it is. Someone for sure sneaked a camera in. I mean, they have some clips on YouTube that yeah. like the shows actually okay. put out. But Alexander Hamilton. It is a show about the right hand man mm -hmm. of um, Christopher Columbus and Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. I'm butchering right now, but it's, yeah, it's about everything, it, like the, the America, it's about America. Mm -hmm. And what's so cool is they hire a ton of Hispanic, black, Asian actors, mm -hmm. and they do rap battles the entire time. And they rap the entire thing. What do you mean rap or home? Boy? They, no, they rap the entire thing. They literally have like a rap battle. Oh yeah, okay. Dude. Insane, it changed my life, man. Mm. It changed my life. It just inspired me and motivated me. Mm -hmm. And it was just like the belief that Alexander Hamilton had for himself, the mm. sacrifice that he did. Oof. Guys, if you can afford, find, be on the wait list for Hamilton, you guys gotta go see it and check it out. It was, it was insane, man. It was like, one of the best shows of all time. When you say tickets are like, wow, like how much are tickets? Guess. Mm. 200. I was in the third row, right in the center middle. Front row. So you're pretty much in the front, so yeah. 800. US, yeah. 800? 880 US per ticket. Dang. That's like 1200 Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because right now it's like a 40% conversion rate. That is crazy, right. man. Worth it, worth every penny, man. How long was the show? Two hours, or three hours. You get food? You have to buy food. No way. <laughs> but you pay that much? <laughs> you better get food, man. No, bro, you don't get dick. You get nothing. You get water. You get inspiration. <laughs> That's what you get. You pay for water. Too. <laughs> really? Yeah, man. Can you eat inside there? Too? Yeah. They oh, have. Yeah. They they have like a whole snack, beer, mm -hmm. wine, cocktails, whatever you want. They'll make it. Mm -hmm. And then you get to keep like this little cup. Souvenirs. Yeah, the souvenirs. You get to keep a, a souvenir. I, I kept the pay playbook mm -hmm. and the little mug. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I obviously I didn't film anything. Mm -hmm. You should have. <laughs> I'd like to see it. Sneak it like this, like just so they don't allow allow cameras. No, on. there's no, yeah. there's no cameras. But then there's people who do like little clips of it. The yeah, the show itself has clips on YouTube. Like if you just YouTube Hamilton Broadway, oh my god, the amount like dude, the soundtrack is banging. Mm -hmm. Like I honestly thought like Broadway was super lame. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm I'm not gonna see pe these people singing that. Mm -hmm. It's so lame. Yeah. And then you go see it, and you're like, oh my. Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> and you cried. <laughs> and I cried. I'm not even an emotional person. I'm so sensitive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I've already watched five shows. 
No. Book of Mormon, mm. Hamilton, Frozen, School of Rock. 